Uh, it's Hoax here. Going to give you a quick update on a few of the changes that we've made to the CAD or I've made to the CAD. Um, and a couple of things that have uh, sort of slowed us down, but also why those changes are going to be worthwhile in the end. Uh, so essentially I redesigned the Z-axis uh, from scratch. Um, there was a, a couple of major reasons why I did this. Uh, and the big one was uh, making it more more easily built with basic tools. Um, so on the Z-axis now, there's actually no requirement for any pockets or channels. Um, and also these counter bores are not required. So you can use basic tools just to drill and a saw and make yourself your Z-axis for both your face plate and your spindle plate. Also changed the way that width is handled with this stock. Um, so for example here, I've got a 75 mil wide Z plate. If I put on my front assembly here as well, and then look at the spindle plate. So hang on, my laptop's just having a moment. Uh, if you have a look at the spindle plate here as well, 75 mil wide. Now that is adjustable um, using the parameters, uh, designed around three standard sizes, uh, 75 mil, three inch or 76.2, and then 80 mil. Uh, those three sizes pretty much cover off Australia, UK, um, Europe, Canada and the US, uh, so everyone will be able to access those. And it just makes getting that stock and building your Z-axis a little bit easier. Um, so you can see I've just changed it to 80 mil here. And if we come back to the Z-axis now, you can see that the Z-axis is now 80 mil wide here. Uh, this piece here will be 80 mil wide. And then your lengths. So all you've got to do is cut a this example, a 220 mil wide length, and uh, for the y axis there, 220, uh, 110 mil wide, sorry. Uh, so, what that means is you buy yourself, say, a 400 mil piece, cut off 220, cut off 110, and then you, you, your stock is to size, so you haven't had to CNC out the right, uh, right sized piece. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing that we've that we've tried to do, is, as I said at the start, is removing the need for channels or uh, counter bores um, or pockets up there. The, the BK-10 now just sits directly on top of the, uh, of the face plate there, so no, no need for that pocket anymore. There's a couple of advantages here. That also lifts up our ball screw just enough that you can remove the need for counter bores in here. Now there is a conflict that will come from that, which is when I turn on the uh, the ball screw here, sort of hard to see, but that would actually be pressing up against the uh, the top of the spindle plate there. You can see that on the back of this, uh, oh, I'll just turn that one off, on the front assembly here, on the back of that there, there is a, a channel going on the rear side of the spindle face plate. Uh, Conscious of the fact that that's not going to be something everyone's going to be able to to mill out, uh, so in order to uh, make things a bit a bit easier, pardon me, easier to assemble, there's an option here for a, a spacer. You turn the spacer on, uh, and that will actually create a printed part. Which I now need to just activate that, which just sits on top of the face plate there, creates that channel, lifts this up. Um, removes again the need for the counter bores and the pockets. There's going to be another part for the front here for the spindle bracket to go on, um, but we'll, we'll get get back to that shortly. Ah, turn that off. Um, bringing these back on, I'll just go through a few of the features. As I start talking, I realise just how much there is to to go through with what we've got here, and it's a little bit confusing in the fact that while it is parametric, it is also still standardised. So it, it, I've designed it in a way that anyone can build a faceplate, they can manufacture and sell, they're all set dimensions, um, but it is also customizable to locally available stock. Uh, so what I mean by that is, I'll just wait for this to, to regenerate, removing that. What I mean by that is this, uh, the bolt patterns and the layouts, they are standard, they're not going to change. So if you have someone in the UK makes a part out of uh, out of uh, 75 mil uh, stock, for example, sends it over to the US, it's going to fit a machine that's been built around um, around 2x2 two two or even 2x3 two steel. So the 
it's it sort of it all works together in a standardized setup but it is also designed to be sort of regionally adjustable for ease of manufacture for people uh, right so just um, moving on to a couple of the features we've got in here uh, the z-axis is also very customizable now you can see here if I click dual Z carriages um, this will I'll take a moment to, to generate this one um, but you know there's a lot of a lot of interest in people wanting to run dual uh, dual carriages I've got that on the X and the Y and now on the Z as well so you can see here the dual Z option um, with this big channel here is designed to preserve uh, Z travel which is you know something that we all all sort of want on a limited Z machine and that just slides over nicely around the BK up there the bolts aren't modelled in at the moment which is why you can't see that with the dual faceplate however it is a little bit harder to make uh, I'll just turn the riser off for a moment you can see that there's these sort of little uh, little bits of metal that pop out there for securing that on that doesn't exist in the single plate version uh, so you sort of need to have access to a CNC already if you're going to go down the, the dual path so that might be something that if you want to go straight to that you might just buy a pre-purchase pre-made um, pre-made faceplate and that sort of goes back to what I was saying earlier about there still being a standard amongst the parametric elements uh, these spacings of the rails don't vary with the stock that you use uh, so if someone has made made a stock uh, you know you can mix you can mix, mix and match between parts that have been made for a a metric machine over to an imperial machine they're all going to work together uh, so I just give my laptop a quick moment here and we'll turn the riser back on turn the spaces back on uh, so look in, in short the z-axis has been a, a pretty big job to to get it to where it is now but I'm actually really happy with what I've ended up with I've ended up with a z-axis that has all the tramming features all the uh, all, all the same features that we have on the regular print and see in a, in a more compact form we've got dual carriages in there we've got uh, excellent rigidity it supports you know, everything you could ask for for as far as uh, changing steel thicknesses and where are we here let's just bump this up to a say a 20 mil thick faceplate give it a moment So we, we support all the di different sizes here. Um, one thing I will touch on as well is I'll just put the x-axis on. Um, and put the z-axis on. Uh, so you can see here we've got two sets of uh, securing bolts at the front. Uh, they're designed to allow you to run various different steel profiles. So at the moment this is set up with a 2 by 2 steel or I think it's 50 by 50 uh, you could run 50 by 75 on here for example uh, but if you were to do that there, there, there'll be a conflict uh, so if we just go to where are we gantry tool optional gantry tool and this one's going to take a moment to regenerate because um, gantry tool is one of the earliest pieces in the in the timeline so it pretty much has to rebuild the whole machine Ah, but it's a good chance to hopefully we won't see any errors or warnings pop up. I'm spending vast amounts of time sort of making sure that everything is rock solid. Um, it's uh, turned into a much, much bigger project than I ever envisaged it could possibly be. But I've got a very direct and, and very clear vision of how I want the, want the whole machine to turn out. Uh, so compute's finished. Here we go. We'll have a look here. Okay, righto. So you can see here the second set of holes now is supporting that 75 by 50 steel. Suddenly it's looking like a real chunky machine there. But you can see at the back here the uh, stepper motor is now conflicting with that ball screw. Which could be a bit of a pain but all we do is we come up into the parameters and we can come down and there will be, as you can see, there's hundreds of parameters in here. Optional additional Z travel, I shouldn't say hundreds, there's tens of parameters. Feels like hundreds when you're working on it every day. Uh, so let's pop in 25 mils of optional additional Z travel. Give the 
going to give the fusion a moment to have a think about it. Okay, and there we are, our conflict's gone. The that it's gone, the z-axis has increased its size. We now need longer rails, we need 240 mil rails, but that all now fits nicely. Uh, we'll move away from the z-axis for a moment. Oh, one, one thing I should probably mention here as well, you know, it's, it's obvious when we look at this that uh, a NEMA 23 might be something people are looking for. Where I want to take the Mini is to sort of being the 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 starting point for, for modifications. So I would expect people will make modifications such as NEMA 23s and servo motors, add-ons and whatnot. So what I'm trying to do is provide a rock solid CAD model, um, a basis for us all to be working from the one idea. Um, and then once we get this out, then you have that you know amazing community power of people making modifications that all work to one standard that we can use together. It's exciting to me. It's a bit terrifying that the popularity and the interest that's coming through in this machine, but uh, you know that's why I'm spending so much time making sure it all works. Uh, so I mentioned at the start that I was going to touch on the rollers. Uh, we're going to drop down uh, just let the machine open. Uh, here we go, y-axis is coming up. Okay, so if we have a look at the rollers here, uh, you'll see that the face plate is no longer flush up against the steel. There's a one mil gap there. Why that's like that, I'm just gonna isolate the, uh, isolate that for a moment. I'm gonna do a section analysis so we can have a look inside the roller. Let's just go in here. Uh, why it's no longer touching is the roller now rests on uh, the bolts that you use for securing both the carriage and then there's a second set of bolt, um, bolts up the top. So what that allows us to do is that allows us to do a completely non-square cut if we needed and then I've got a two-sided uh, two -sided assembly tool that I'll, I'll bring up in a moment. Um, I'll just turn the hardware on. So you can see that the, the roller itself is actually pushing onto the heads of these bolts. Um, you can actually see I'll need to adjust that one there. That's because I've got an M5 up the top and there's an M4 there. So there's a little bit of a bug that I'll need to fix, uh, but I'll pop in and do that shortly. Uh, so what that means is that, yeah, cut the roller. You could cut it with a hacksaw if you needed to. Use the assembly tool. I'll just bring that up that assembly tool up now so you can see that. You can see how the assembly tool caps off over the top of it and marks a square position top and bottom at the same time. So look, I'm gonna wrap it up here. Um, this has probably been a little bit more disjointed than I was aiming for, uh, but it is an update and it, we're super close to getting this out. Um, I've pretty much been working full time on this uh, at the moment, just getting all these details sorted out, getting it to the point that uh, that I'm prepared to send it out into the world and, and let people start sort of building these things. Why I've held off uh, is is just ensuring that when you spend your money and when you start your, your build, that we're not going to be turning around and saying, hey, sorry guys, I, I, I got it wrong, you're going to need XXXXX and wasting your money. So I know it's frustrating and I've been saying repeatedly, oh look, it's, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Uh, but it, it's vital to me that once we send this out into the world that people are, you know, they have a functional CAD and a functional machine with, with some of the little flaws worked out so you're ready to go. Uh, on that, I'm thinking that uh, diverting away from the Discord a little bit for the Mini We'll probably put up a static traditional forum uh, onto the Print and See Mini website. That will just allow people to log bug requests, uh, you know, lo uh, lo log issues and bugs, or uh, ask for help in a more um, traditional format where you, you can reference it and come come back through. So I'll I'll change the Mini site in the next couple of days. You'll see that change over, and then we'll also get the uh, the link up to start getting the downloads happening for the file. Uh, it'll come out as a beta initially, so I'm expecting there will be a few small issues still. I, there's just so many variations of you know different steel sizes and different options available in the file 
that I can't possibly test everything before I put it out there. But you can see as I'm sort of talking to you now, I'm making modifications such as I just put uh, 75 by 50 steel and gained ourselves some extra Z room on the machine there. Gives you 97 mil. This is still a NEMA 17 base machine, but super cool. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm gonna leave it. I'll wrap it up and um, hopefully the next update you hear from me is the uh, the release update.